All right. Welcome back to another edition of the Second Opinion Loan Officer podcast. And I'm excited today. I have a special guest here, Mike Ferrasi from hitthereadbutton.com. And we are going to talk about short form video superhero secrets. And I think you'll pick up on the superhero theme with Mike's Mike's background there. But if you've been following my podcast, I do a lot of long form video and that's mostly what I do is long form. And then I'm talking about breaking it up and pulling out your shorts out of there, but that's not really the best way to do it. The best way is to create short form video because it's always seems a little out of context and a little out of place. And so I was introduced to Mike by Brian View from Finlocker, Mm -hmm. a good friend of both of ours. And Mike's been helping Brian And uh, we started talking and I think we're brothers from another mother from way back. We started talking and we start geeking out. I'm like, we need to press record and we need to hit the red button and uh, let's have a conversation about this. So Mike, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Scott. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about your background and how hit the red button came up and really why you're doing this, why you're, why you're doing this for loan officers and the mortgage industry and why it's so important. I'll try to give you the nickel tour. Stop me if I go too long because I'm a tangent guy. But uh, historically, I'm a mortgage guy. I've been in the industry for over 18 years. 15 plus of that has been in secondary marketing, capital markets, product management, uh, ops, all that fun stuff. You hear about the Gini ones and twos and putting pools together to sell on the secondary market. I did all that. So When it comes to, I like to relate that to the video content directly because I help a lot of mortgage and tangentially mortgage related companies. And it helps a lot to have somebody helping you through your content who really knows the business and the lingo and what you should be talking about and the news and the industry as a whole. But around the beginning of the year, obviously everybody knows what happened in the mortgage industry. The bottom fell out and everybody was cooking for stuff to do. I was luckier than a lot of people. And I didn't get that layoff phone call, but my capacity was reduced and responsibilities were were taken down a notch with the gig that I currently had. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to fill the gap, so to speak, like real person talk. I have a wife who's a stay at home mom. We have a one year old son. We have a 10 year old daughter. I got food to put on tables and diapers to put on butts. So I was trying to figure out a way that I could do that without selling my soul and going back to the grind and just doing something for other people. I really wanted to see what I could do in a way to where I could earn, but also give back and help share knowledge in a way that I really enjoyed doing it. And I've always loved making video and building educational curriculums and talking to consumers, mortgage professionals, real estate professionals, everybody under the sun about what there is to offer in this industry, because there's just so much misinformation out there. And that kind of naturally led me into content creation roles. You know, a couple of thoughts on that. First of all, and, and you and I talked about this, there are so many smart, caring loan officers out there that like, they'll tell you, I'm not a salesperson. I'm an educator or I'm a counselor, right? It's like 90% 90 counseling and education and 10% financial advisor, knowing you're a financial advisor and, and having somebody like you that actually has the technical chops and the mortgage experience is just so important because you get so many of these tech companies that come in and they're just like, okay, talk about mortgages. And, yeah. and there's no guidance there. There's no, that's the number one question. I don't know if that's the number one question you get, but I don't know what to talk about. Yes, you do. And here's where we start. So that's the thing you're low, you're loaded with foundational knowledge yeah. is absolutely mind blowing to people who don't do this for a living. Like yeah. you take your knowledge for granted, because if you're a mortgage professional, this is what you expert in all day, every day. And what I tell people all the time is if there was a consumer sitting across the desk from you, you would have no problems coming up. You would know exactly what to say to them. And that's sure. what this is. It, it feels and weird because there's exactly. not a face. It's a piece of glass, but it's the same thing. So back in 2021, I started working with a brand where I 
that's when I really jumped whole hog into content creation. And I was their SVP of content and education. All the written content they published on blogs for SEO purposes, all the video content. I was the face of the company. Everything you can imagine from shorts to long form videos to YouTube channels, LinkedIn and everything in between. I headed everything up and it was mortgage related, but it was really a content driven role. And that was the first time I took anything like that on. And this company, homebuyer.com, love them. Hi, Dan, if you're watching, they are the mortgage company for first time homebuyers. They're building themselves to serve first time homebuyers only. Now, now that seems like a great business model. Back in 2021, a lot of mortgage professionals were sleeping on first time home buyers because they were yep. rolling out of bed, time. falling into a pile of refis every morning. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't need to cater to those borrowers. So we were trying to educate and edutain and cater to those borrowers with our content. We were able to get a good lead flow going over there. But that really, the main one of the main things that I took from that was the FAQs, all the frequently asked questions that we get from consumers. It was astounding how little the general public knows about how mortgages work. Yeah. And right. to this day, you pull up, just do a quick Google search on how much down payment it takes to buy a house. And you'll find the news stories. You'll find the articles, the surveys, the studies that have been done. And time and time again, no matter how many people are polled or where those people are located, half the dang country thinks you need 20% down to buy a house. Yeah. Is it, so when you're, isn't that when crazy? you're wondering about stuff to talk about yeah. in your content, Start with your most foundational knowledge, the stuff that you learned in the first two weeks of the industry, because people just don't know that stuff. They're listening to Uncle Bob who bought his house in 1967. They don't know what the market is right now. <laughs> they didn't now. have 30 year fixed back then. It was yeah, 30% down they don't and know you went to the, the local bank. Now. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's so funny. And it's right in the name first time home buyer. They're always new. They're always, yeah. this is their first time and they don't know. And they don't know that it's not, even though a lot of companies like to make mortgages seem like they're a commodity, they're mm -hmm. not. You can't walk into a store and buy a mortgage. Everybody's situation is different. So it's funny. I can, I like to play devil's advocate and disagree with that statement. Mortgages are a commodity. Everybody selling the same money comes from the same place. But qualifying is not commodity. The service, not the service that's provided by the loan officer has not been commoditized yet. Yeah. Tech isn't there. Yeah. Well, I still go back to the well. different, and I go back to the different programs, right? Yeah. So because you still, but there's no reason why there couldn't be one set of underwriting guidelines. There just mm -hmm. isn't. There isn't, but you've got Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac conventional, and they have different guidelines. They're 95% of the same, but mm -hmm. they each have nuances. And that's great. That's where I've gotten my most traffic is from mm -hmm. focusing on those nuances because a lot of the companies that do commoditize their product, and they absolutely can, they don't address the fringes. And, yeah. and that's where I think content is really can't, powerful. And that, that's what it is. You can't commoditize the fringes. And that's where fringes, content is the so fringes powerful. Is, that's where the gray area is. Yeah. Not everything is just a yes or no checkbox yeah. within an automation. Yeah. And, and that's the whole point of this podcast. The Second Opinion Loan Officer podcast is you're not going to get everybody that clicks on the quick and ad, you're not going to get most sure. of them the first time, but if they're on the fringes or if they don't like talking to telemarketers or they know more than the loan officer who worked at the pizza store last mm -hmm. week, they're going to go back and look for a second opinion. And that's where this content piece is so vitally important. So let's fast forward to, yep. you got to put butt, diapers on butts. You got to put food That's on the right. family. Right. And it sounds like you have a wonderful wife and supporting family. And they said, yeah. all right, do what you love yep. and, uh, and start helping people. So what made yeah. you think that this was the right way to go? This is the right way. To, it's the right way to go. Cause it's what I'm passionate about. Yep. If you're passionate about something and you pursue it, it is the right way to go. Period. That's right. That's right. If it now, if you do that with intent, you're most likely going to be successful as well. Yeah. So that that's kind of where that started from, and not just content marketing. 
I'm not some guy who's going to say, oh, yeah, I'll write your blog for you or, oh, we'll do this for SEO or we'll help you run these paid ads. And this, no, it's video. I am video focused. If you want content marketing, I got go talk to my guy, Dan Smokoska. He's awesome. Be legendary, baby. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. There, there are plenty of agencies out there who will do stuff like that. But in my research, what I found is that when you reach out to a traditional agency asking about video, the only thing they know how to do is send a camera crew out to your place mm. and bring in all the big gear and book shooting days and do all the fancy editing and charge you thousands of dollars yeah. to give you something that looks like a commercial. But newsflash, if you're posting this stuff for organic growth, especially if you're focusing on social media feeds, people aren't there to watch commercials. No, no. Not only did I see a hole in the market in a place where I can provide people a service to where I can, whether I'm coaching them along or I'm hand in hand with them while they're making the content, shooting it for them. I work for a couple of brands where I act as their spokesperson and I make all the content for them here in my studio. But regardless of what they're doing, I'm doing it at a price that's much more approachable than a Madison Avenue based agency could afford to give someone a small to mid-sized business or even a solo type of originator but I'm giving it with the understanding that authenticity is key. You need to be relatable. Things can't look like TV commercials yeah. and gain traction and do well on social media for the vast majority of the time. There's an exception to every rule, but people aren't there to watch super polished stuff. Yeah. And at my core, I'm a mortgage guy. So if you're in mortgage or real estate or a tangential industry, we speak the same language and I can help you with what you need to talk about. Talk a little bit about what kind of, because this is what I loved about what you did is you, I think you, if they're local to you, yeah. Orange County, California, you can send out a camera crew. You can show up with sure. your camera, but for the most part, and ever since COVID, like this yeah. is the way to go, right? Like a, a Zoom call type of, we can record these streams separately and sure. you can do your editing. So talk a little bit about your product suite because that's where I really think you nailed it is you mm -hmm. made this kind of content accessible to the average loan officer. Yeah, so I have four tiers of, uh, of content offerings. One of my buddies called me a, a CAS, CS company. You're familiar with software as a service? Yeah. I, I provide content as a service. So, <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're a CAAS company over here. When I say we, I'm referring to me and my wife. This is a family owned operation. I'm not looking to build too. a multi-billion dollar agency. If I have a crazy public exit or something like that, I'm not going to turn it down, but that's not the goal here. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do some good work for a decent number of clients, not a ton of them, yeah. that are like-minded and that we can help each other succeed along the way. And I can provide a safety net for my family. That's really what this is. Yeah. But my four tiers of offerings, top one would be for brands, whether they're startups or established brands, it's more of a brand advocacy type of thing where I will be your brand advocate or we'll find a brand advocate for you. And we'll make all the content for you and provide it to you so you can schedule it out for posting. And we help with uh, strategy and topics and scripting. And we work with marketing and compliance departments to make sure that all the brand assets are consistent. Messaging is consistent. We're not touching any topics that could get anybody in trouble. I know mortgage is a highly regulated industry. Yep. And, uh, and the phrase did you run that by legal is the worst thing that any marketing person can hear. <laughs> That's so right. We, we try to nip all that stuff in the butt right up front and make sure yeah. that the problems never occur. When you step down a level, that would be where if you're local, you can hire us out for a half or a whole day shooting day. We'll bring all our equipment to you. It'll look a little bit more polished. We'll light your place nicely. The cameras are nice. We'll coach you through making the content. And then from there, you can take it and do what you want with it or we'll take it back and edit it up for you. That's a conversation that we can have. It depends on what your needs are. The, the next two is where I think your audience can really get some benefit from, because this is the stuff that I really started working on to make it more accessible and more affordable for darn near anybody with any kind of a marketing budget. So what you were talking about is something I refer to as guided content creation. 
Okay. And guided content creation is exactly this. It's a, a glorified recorded Zoom. I don't use Zoom. I use a piece of software that records in 4K if your camera is capable of it. So there's no limitations there. But it's a half hour to an hour long call. And through that half hour to hour long call, I interview you. I talk to you. We talk about some subjects. We talk about your company, what they're doing, or you and what you're doing. Recent releases, tech updates, news and headlines, general mortgage, real estate education, whatever it is that you want to talk about, we chat about it for a half hour to an hour. We do a little audit in the beginning to make sure that your camera's pointed the right direction. There's no bright window light behind you making you look like a shadow in the frame. We'll get you looking decent. Yeah. Yeah. Which is all you really need to look because post pandemic, everybody's used to looking at people on Zoom. That's right. So, so it just it looks more authentic and real and relatable. You don't need any equipment. You can use the built in webcam and microphone on your computer because we are going to take the files after the call, after you hang up and just go back to your day job so you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then we will clip everything into short form videos, give it a professional edit, repair the audio so it sounds really nice. All of the things that you need. And a few days later, we hit you back with a month worth of short form video content. That's that awesome. month worth of content is whatever you dictate you want a month worth of content to be. If you're just starting out and you just want to post once a week, cool, we'll give you four videos. If you really want to go for it and say, you know what, I'm doing some personal stuff on my own, but I want these leveled up edits and this type of content to add into that as a leveled up thing, like three times a week. Maybe I want to post those Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then I'll fill gaps with personal content from there. Then we'll do an hour call. We'll get you 12 videos. The last guided content creation, like you said, Brian View, the last one I did with him, we got 14 pieces in 37 minutes. He's a fishing man. One of those things. And so that guided content creation, I have a, a starting price on that at $4.99 a month. So now we're getting really- Dude, That's super realm, reasonable. Right. We're getting into the realm of accessible here. Yeah. Is, is $4.99 a month going to be affordable for every loan officer? No, absolutely yeah. not. Completely fine. But is it going to be affordable for most branch managers? for most people who are recruiting, for most startups, for most things like that, for most people that don't want to go to an advertising agency, say the word yep. video and know that they're going to charge you five grand just to talk to them about it. Yep. Yeah. Now we're getting into the realm of approachable with all that stuff. Yeah. yeah it's and, not going to convince the person that's never thought about doing video to do it. Correct. But, but somebody who's serious about doing video and values their time that's like a no brainer because that's exactly that. That's really exactly. What it's about. exactly. And do like a quick case study on this. I have a client that we're doing eight videos a month for. They are a, they're not quite a startup, but they are a small business in, I will call them the accounting tech realm, right? So this is not mortgage or real estate related, but on one of our last calls, I said, Mike, I'm surprised. I thought this would take longer to work. What do you mean? It would, you thought it would take longer to work. They're only posting their content on LinkedIn because they're very much B2B, obviously account accounting services and things like that. And uh, I said, what do you mean you thought it would take longer to work? I said, well, we've only been posting these videos for like three months. And just a few days ago, I got a referral from a video, two phone calls, a quick contract, and we're onboarding them in two days. Yeah. So, well, that's great. But I wanted to get into the details with them. I, I really want to know the numbers. So over the course of three or four months, their initial outlay, their initial investment on everything we've been doing together is six to $8,000, somewhere around there. Yeah. Annual recurring revenue on that contract, 72 grand. Wow. And they have a 95% customer retention rate. Wow. And their average customer triples in size within the first five years. So annual recurring revenue at the baseline 72,000. So ROI on organic video, even if you're paying somebody to help you create it in their case, so far, 1100% and growing. <laughs> That's not bad. You know, it, it's, it's crazy how, how it can work like that. And so, what's cool too, is like you knew that you were creating the content for LinkedIn. So you yes. were creating content that would resonate on LinkedIn. It was less and, educational and more thought leadership driven. 
Yeah. And I wouldn't call LinkedIn exactly an evergreen platform, but it really is because when somebody goes to your LinkedIn profile, they're mm -hmm. expecting a professional resume. So sure. they're going to scroll through and they're going to see what kind of content you've been looking at. And that's the value of content. It's like, it's not, you're just, it's not a, a TikTok or an Instagram that's going to get lost in the algorithm 12 seconds after you post it. Sure. It's, like, it's, people are making their decisions off of the, their knowledge base of video content. So Don't sleep on TikTok though for SEO because Google is starting to index TikTok. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that and I'm starting to huge. I'm starting to see it. Yeah. No, it's huge. huge but it's but it's not everybody's personality, but it's good to see that that TikTok. Now hopefully the government won't shut down TikTok. <laughs> like they've tried a couple of times, but come on, what is it's, it's what is this? January 6th or J July 6th, 2023. Everybody's over on threads now. I did, threads? Yeah. Okay. You just threads, I, do you know about thre threads? I don't even know yesterday. about threads. All right. Threads is Mark Zuckerberg's answer to Twitter. Okay, and, uh, I saw that came out. Through, it's linked through your Instagram account. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So 500 character post limit, five minute videos are up to a five minute video is allowed. So threads is now when I post my daily videos, that is the sixth platform that I post them to. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. But the only thing you can do is start and find out. And you need video content to post on these platforms. So I, I believe you need video content to post. You don't, I do video every day. Yeah. I'm on camera every day. I'm editing every day. I'm posting every day. I also run a video focused content marketing company that I'm trying to build. Yeah. So if I didn't do that, it'd be disingenuous, right? Yeah, yeah it would, would be, be a little I'm weird. Not you, <laughs> I'm not everybody else. You guys, like nobody watching this needs video to post every day. Wouldn't be bad. No. Because it is the most authentic way to connect with the viewer base. That's right. But you should have video to supplement in with your image and text posts. You've got an even more accessible product. I do. This is my most recent launch. It's called Video Marketing Marvels. So this is videomarketingmarvels.com. I set out to build Red Button Media as, quote, professional grade video content for budgets of all sizes. Yep. And my entry point was $4.99 with guided content creation, $4.99 a month. That's not for budgets of all sizes. So I tried to figure out what type of offering that I could give meaningful offering because there's other things out there that will say, Hey man, pay me a hundred bucks a month and you can get this weekly coaching call and I'll toss you some video scripts. Like I don't like that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but there's a lot of hook based content out there and there's a lot of people saying, Hey, just do what I do. But the problem is that when you get on camera and you do what somebody else does, you're not building your own brand. You're building theirs. Yeah. One thing, and, I, one thing I always say is if you're trying to, if the best case scenario, if you're trying to keep up with the Jones is you become yeah. a Jones. Yeah. <laughs> right? Perfect thing. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And, and I've, I've been saying, and it's been a pretty consistent message in my content recently because I see so many more services popping up saying, if you don't know what to say, we'll tell you exactly what to say. Yeah. We'll give you all the scripts. Just yeah. read off of our scripts. And like all I hear when I hear that is, you want to take the easy way out? We'll make you our puppet. And, and it's just not, it's just not effective and it's not impactful. Correct. But like it sounds, and also I don't like, I don't like scripts. I don't like scripts. I don't like teleprompters because quite honestly, you're a professional. You've been doing this for a long time. Sure. Get over yourself, get over the camera Perfect. and just have a conversation. I tell people, so when I create content, people mm -hmm. are like, how do you create your content? I'm like, well, I try to explain things like I'm explaining it to my mom, right? So it's know. somebody I care about. I'm going to tell her the truth and I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can understand. So I tell people, take a picture of your mom, tape it on your tripod underneath your camera there and you just explain it to her. Like she's trying to apply for a mortgage. There you, you go. Know, little things like that. You can work with bullet points, not necessarily scripts. 
I yeah, don't bullet mind. points. I like bullet. Yeah, I like bullet. I need bullet points. I've done hundreds of videos off of scripts, and I'm very comfortable with them now. But I Most write every are. single one of them. Yes. So yeah. every script is written in the way that I speak. So That's right. when somebody else looks at that, they might not deliver it right. It might sound funny, but when I look at my script, I know what I mean. So I, I know how I'm going to say it. Yeah. Um, takes a lot of practice yeah. to be good on a teleprompter. Beware. Just beware, everybody, please. Beware of any service that places value on giving you scripts to read because yeah. those are not written in your voice. And yeah. you are voluntarily, that word came out wrong. If you're voluntarily <laughs> giving away your personality and your uniqueness yeah. when you read off of somebody else's script. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it's not going to help you. Because for those first four, five, six months, whatever it is, you might see a lift. Those scripts might enable you in your mind to create more content than you would yeah. have otherwise. And you're going to see a lift. You might even see a few leads. It might start working. And then it's going to fall flat. And you're going to wonder why. Yeah. And the reason why your online brand has no staying power is because it's not your brand. And people, yeah. can, re people can recognize that. It's just not authentic. And viewers will know. And they'll yeah. start to tune out. So yeah, it, what I it want falls to under the here. it falls under the better than nothing category. And yes. in a best case scenario, it gives you the confidence to go out. But and if you must if you, work off of somebody else's script, at least please fact check the bejesus out of it. <laughs> that's off, right. Because that's Lord right. knows what they're saying. And the second thing is read it out loud multiple times and make changes to things that you wouldn't say and put them in the language that you would say them. That would be my, if you must read off of a script. You, you and I both in our amazing. businesses, you and I both in our businesses do the guided content. So mm -hmm. in the long form, I do guided. We have professional directors and they're yeah. going to ask you questions and you're going to go back and forth. You do the guided content and you chop it up. And I think that's a really good strategy mm -hmm. if you can find that, if it fits into your price point. But if it doesn't, like I said, I got the, we, we just launched video marketing marvels and yep. to, to cut to the chase, I will never provide you a script through video marketing marvels, but I will absolutely help you find your own voice. And that's the entire, that's the entire that's awesome. idea around it. I want you to find your own voice. And this is the way that I feel that I can help. So I'm basically cataloging all of my short form tips and tricks and then expanding them into a full-on lesson plan. So Video Marketing Marvels is an online course where you get a new lesson every 10 days. It's a members-only community hosted on Discord where members can go on Discord, network with each other. Oh, you kids in back Discord. And forth. I just I got it. on Slack. I love, the, <laughs> I love the Discord. It's great. And then it's live coaching every week with me personally. Oh, that's awesome. Never going to, I'm never going to have somebody come in and fill in for me or anything like that. Every Wednesday at 11 Pacific two Eastern, we do a one hour zoom. Any member can hop on, ask any questions they want, get as specific to their situation as they want. We can talk about specific ideas. We can audit some videos, work out how you can find your own voice and how you can go about making video more effectively. Is, is that mastermind? Is that mastermind a group call? Uh, that is a group call. Yes. Yeah. I, the, what I love about those group calls though, is you've got a room of like-minded people and everybody thinks about this stuff in a little bit different way. You, you know, know, one of the I, first ones, cause you know, these things build slowly. The, the very first call, I had three people show up. Yeah. Three people. I had the, I had a uh, Dan Smokoska who just launched his own mortgage based marketing company. Yeah. I had a, you get to introduce well, me to I, Dan, by the way. I, I, I don't know him. I will. I've heard I great will. things about him. He was on the call. I had a loan officer on the call, and I had a title rep on the call. Wow. And just those three people, little yeah. different perspectives here and wow. there. Everybody kind of getting ideas from each other. It's, yeah. it's a really nice time. It really yeah. is. It's a good time. But you, you get the course. The I wasn't going to do the course. I was just going to do the live coaching in the community. But I just kept thinking, what if somebody can't hop on a call? That's not fair. So I said, screw it. I'm going to put a whole course together. So it's a, and the course is not like a set it and forget it type of thing. I'm recording new lessons every five to 10 days. I'm recording a new lesson. I very rarely batch record them. So that way they can be up to date with the most current information. 
and I will go back and edit them if anything falls out of date. It's kind of living and breathing type of thing. It's not this thing where I put together 20 lessons and now I'm trying to sell it. Yeah. Like this is a living and breathing type of thing that people can access anytime, anywhere when they want to. And that video marketing marvels.com, you can join for $49 a month. So I wanted to price it in a way that would allow people to join in order to add to their expertise. I'm a firm believer that being an expert, being a professional involves getting multiple viewpoints and talking to multiple people and getting multiple perspectives. So I didn't want to try to say my course is better than this person's course. You should yeah. get mine instead. Yeah. I'm saying I priced mine low enough to where you can do both. And that way you can listen to them. You can listen to me. You can listen to this person. You can listen yeah. to that person. And then you can get it to make sense for you. And then you can form your own opinion. Now, I love that. And I'm so grateful for how small this industry is sometimes. And I'm grateful for people like you that that come in and you think this way about bringing this in, making this accessible. We're not competitors, but we both have the same passion and we're both trying to get people to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And really the single most important thing, and then I want to get your final takeaway here is sure. just get started. Just take that first step. And people like Mike are out there creating these things that you can baby step into this thing. You can, gosh, an hour a week with somebody with your much as much experience as you have. Mm -hmm. And then even being able to share that with other pilgrims on the same journey, trying to get their legs underneath them. That's just, it's just amazing. And I think we'll wrap this up with what is the one thing that you think the, the one takeaway that you want everybody that anybody that watches this, that you want to take away from this conversation. All right. So there's a couple of things and it all revolves around permission. Okay. Nobody's going to give you permission to do this. You need to give yourself permission. Mm. That's the first thing. And you don't just have to give your per yourself permission to hit the red button, make video. You have to give yourself permission to be a beautifully imperfect human. Yeah. Cause you are, we all are. Yeah. And for the people first starting out, special message for you. You're going to make a video and you're going to watch it back and you're going to say, I look funny and I sound funny. And do you know why you think that? Because you look funny and you sound funny. But there's a scientific reason for it. Typically, for people who don't make video, people who aren't me and Scott on camera all the time, the only time you see yourself is in a mirror. But when you look at yourself back from a camera recording, you're seeing an actual view of yourself as we see you. You're not seeing the mirror image. Yeah. And we are not symmetrical beings. Yeah. We are asymmetrical. So Scott might see the mole on his cheek and say, it's on the wrong side. I look weird. <laughs> yeah. That's just how you look to everybody yeah. else. It's yeah. okay. Also, yeah. when you hear yourself, you're going to sound funny. And it's because you do. Because usually when you hear yourself, it's not through headphones, through a microphone, through whatever it is. It's filtered through all the bone and blood and guts that we have going on in our head. You don't hear your voice from your mouth to your ears like we do. Yeah. What you need to trust is that while you look and sound funny, some of you more than others, whether you like it or not, you look and sound just like you do to us. And that's what we want to see. We just want to see you. Yes. So don't be so hard on yourself and give yourself permission to be beautifully imperfect and just hit record. Talk about what you expert all day in Dude. because that's going to be a comfortable pocket for you to start with. And then as you get more comfortable, you'll find yourself saying, Hey, this burger from this place over here is pretty good. I tried this new coffee house over there. The latte is okay, but get a pump of hazelnut in there whatever it is. And then all of a sudden the people in your community and your viewer base, they're actually going to get to know you. Yeah. And when they get to know you, that's when you're going to start gaining some trust and building a brand that has some staying power. Dude, I, I don't even want to build on that. That was beautiful. I didn't expect you to drop some neuroscience on us, but hey, that, man. That sometimes, was... you get, sometimes you got to give legitimate real world reasons for people being ugly. And Hey man, that's why I'm ugly. <laughs> what do we, what do we call this? A face for radio? Day. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Face for yeah. radio, but for with zoom and COVID we're all good. That's right. 
So Mike, thank you so much, man. Thank you for joining this. Anybody watching this, all the links are down here in the description, wherever you're watching this on Spotify or on YouTube or on social, reach out to Mike, talk to him. I hope we've been able to, I hope I've been able to show what a good guy he is and he's got a great heart coming from a great place. And he's really trying to help us all you originators out there. You got to start doing video Mm -hmm. and I can't think of a better way to start from Mike. And we've, and we know people, if he's not a perfect fit or you want to go a little bit bigger, um, or you want to go a little bit smaller, or you want to focus on this, we know people that we can refer you people to that we trust. So it's one of those things I've, I founded my company on a basis that I will not try to convince anybody to make video. It's 2023, 87% of the companies on the planet post educational video about stuff. 96% of people watch an educational video about a product or service before purchasing. Those are real numbers. Yeah. So and like, everybody's doing not our job so to convince not, you that you should be on video. To, if you're not bought into video, I'm not the magic bullet that's going to get that's you. That's right. There. But if you have thought, I should probably be making some more video, I wish I could do it better. I feel like I can help you out. And with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Thanks again, Mike. I appreciate Thank it. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate again. it.